Hello, I am Bailey Clemens, your news anchor with GERN News, broadcasting live from the city of Virusville, where a sudden attack just occurred. It is believed that the culprit is some type of virus, which is an intracellular parasite that cannot replicate without the cellular machinery of the host. The suspect is one who can infect bacteria, algae, fungi, protozoa, and even animals. They are infectious particles considered to be active or inactive versus dead or alive. They are composed of nucleic acid, a capsid, and may or may not have an envelope. I'm here today to investigate what this virus could be and what disease has caused this virus so that it's wreaking havoc in the city of virus. What is your name, sir? Can you tell us what happened? Hey, baby. My name is Dennis, and I'm traveling. I just came from visiting my home country of Benin in West Africa. As soon as I was traveling for 15 hours flight, and as soon as I got off the plane, I started to feel dehydrated. I had to reduce appetite. Overall, I didn't feel well. I'm so sorry to hear that you were experiencing malaise after exiting the plane. Can you tell us about the other passengers? Well, almost everyone on the plane was coughing, blowing their nose. And I noticed that too. One of the flight attendants sneezed in the car before heading into the passengers. Interesting. So it appears that this unknown virus has a mode of transmission of nose and throat secretions. Well, thank you so much for your contribution, sir. You're welcome. You are a current student, correct? Yes. What university do you attend and have you noticed this phenomenon occurring on campus? I attend VMCU, Virusville Metropolis Central University, and in my microbiology class we just finished talking about viruses. And not to sue my own horn, but I do have the highest grade in the class, so I may know a little bit about this virus. Please tell us so that we're all informed. Thank you, ma'am. This, it appears that many people with this unknown virus develop sores, painful sores called herpagina. And since it's this town called Virusville, we know it can't be a bacterial and virus infection. Please, go on. The common side effects of this virus leads itself to belong to the Kakasaki virus family. This virus belongs to the family Picacorna viridae and the genes Introvirus. Introvirus are among the most common in human pathogens. And ordinarily it's transmitted through the fecal oral route, just as the virus appears to be here. I cannot put my finger on exactly what it is though. Has this affected anyone that you've personally interacted with here on campus? Well, we did just have a substitute professor because our other professor was out. And they sent an email saying that their child had, had been just felt ill. And she mentioned in the email that her son was touching the doorknob of the restroom and he started to feel muscle aches, nausea developed, sore throat, and abdomin abdominal discomfort. And he immediately felt ill. Thank you, Ms. Dominique. Now we know that this virus has a mode of transmission via contaminated surfaces and objects. We have an eyewitness here with us today who had a run in with this suspect. Please, Ms. Johnson, tell us what happened and has this happened before? So my two-year-old had developed a fever for a few days and then developed painful mouth sores. She had blisters appear all over her body. I've heard of this happening before once in India. In 2007, there was a huge epidemic. However, the first times of infection occurred whenever my child attended Once Upon a Kiddo, the daycare center. So I looked up the symptoms and these could be caused from common things that happen at daycares that are potty training and little children also put things in their mouth and um, frequent diaper changes and my daughter was exposed there. So with the diaper changes and the potty training and with children constantly putting their hands in their mouth, 
your daughter has been exposed to fecal matter. Is this correct? Yes, and I am currently filing a lawsuit because there are sanitary methods that should be practiced, like disinfection and antisepsis. I know Joseph Lister or Louis Pastor won't stand for this, so I'm not going to stand for it either. And it hurts my heart to know a nasty virus hijacked my baby's intercellular machinery and once upon a kiddo did nothing about it. The virus used its spikes to bind to my baby's cellular receptors and penetrated my baby's cells and uncoated, um, becoming free and releasing viral nucleic acids into the cytoplasm of my baby cells and then use her ribosomes to make its proteins. It's not fair and someone needs to be held accountable. Thank you so much, Ms. Johnson, for sharing that with us. As you can see, emotions are running high. We're here in a doctor's office with Ms. Perry. Ms. Perry, can you tell us what happened? <coughs> yeah, for like three days I had this horrible headache. I'm constantly irritable and I have a sore mouth. <coughs> Alrighty. Can you tell me when you first started showing symptoms? About three days ago after I broke up. And by making out with your boyfriend, that means you had person-to-person -person contact, is that correct? Mm -hmm. He was my boyfriend, so, yeah. If you don't mind me asking, why did you all break up? He was really gross. Like, he had bad hygiene. He would forget to wash his hands sometimes. Sometimes he would even forget to brush his teeth. And he confessed to me that he had developed a disease based off his poor hygiene, and his disease has no vaccine to cure it. I'm already sick. I have to go. Thank you for your contributions, Ms. Perry. So it appears that this unknown virus is also spread by direct close contact with someone else who has the virus. Let's interview a scientist who has extracted some of the virus to look at it underneath the microscope to inform us about it on a molecular basis. Dr. Sykes, please tell us about your findings. Of course. So far, what we know is that children under the age of 10 are often affected. However, teens and adults can sometimes get the virus as well. Apparently, this, is unknown. this unknown virus is some variation of the Coxsackie virus. This is because the Coxsackie virus is transmitted primarily via fecal oral route and respiratory aerosols, although transmission via formites is possible. The virus initially replicates in the upper respiratory tract and the distal small bowel. Tell us more about the properties of this virus. Well, Coxsackie virus are part of the enterovirus family, and it also includes poliovirus and hepatitis A virus in that family as well. They live in the human digestive tract. They can often, often spread from person to person, usually from unwashed hands or contaminated surfaces, or even by feces where they can live for several days. Some people, especially young children, may get dehydrated if they aren't able to swallow enough liquids due to the painful mouth sores. Dr. Sykes, please tell us about your microscopic findings. Well, after using an electron microscope, I noted that this unknown virus has an, is a non-enveloped virus with linear, positive-sense, single-stranded RNA. After comparing my findings with after comparing my findings with the previous microscopy in the lab, I was able to um, definitely conclude that this unknown virus belongs to the family Picornoviridae and the genus Enterovirus. Thank you so much, Dr. Sykes, for keeping us all informed. You're welcome. Such a tragic story. After listening to all of the eyewitness accounts and those from the victims, I draw the conclusion that this must be the hand, foot, and mouth disease. You can lower the risk of uh, being infected by teaching your children to use the soap and the water to wash their hands. Avoid eating, drinking, hugging, or kissing infected person with the mouth. It is important to note that hand, foot, and mouth disease is not related to foot and mouth disease, which is sometimes called hoof and mouth disease which is an infectious viral disease found in farm animals. You cannot contract hand, foot, and mouth disease from pets or other animals, and you cannot transmit it to them.
disinfecting surfaces and soiled items. 73% ethanol will do the job. It's better to use 70% rather than a higher one because it doesn't evaporate quickly. Hand, foot, and mouth disease is spread from person to person through coughing and sneezing or contact with blister fluid or feces from an infected person. You can lower your risk of being infected by practicing good hygiene.